All right, so Jess emails me. Jesse, I think it's Jesse. Jesse's girl, ba bow bow bow. I just want Jesse's girl, ba bow bow bow. How do I find Jesse's phone number so I can call her? It's eight six seven five three zero nine nine. It's Jesse's phone number. So I want Jesse's girl. I gotta call eight six seven five three zero nine. Woo! Ain't that a blast of the past? Yes, sir, it is. Um, Rick Springfield and. Tommy Two Tone, right? Eight six seven five three. I don't know if Tommy Two Tone was he a ska guy? Rockabilly ska guy? Because Tommy Two Tone. Is that his name? Tommy Two Tone, who did eight six seven five three zero nine? I think it is. Anyway, so Jesse writes in and she goes, Josh, I've stumbled across your channel three years ago, and it just was such a breath of fresh air. I don't think I want this thing. I'm staying on seventy seven. Yeah, okay. I'm going to help my mom move out today. Well, we're actually not doing that. What we're going to do is go to my mom, my brother, my sister, and me. We're going to my mom's house and starting to clean it out. Got a freaking dumpster. Going to start moving stuff. Fun times had by all. Fun times had by all. Moving sucks, donkey balls, dude. That's all I got to say about that. Anyway, she goes, but your politics got to turn me off. I said, man, I get it. I mean, I, I know I have a much bigger channel uh, with people who, uh, who are my political or who I... If I hid my politics, I don't want to hide my politics. My politics are part of who I am. That's just a fact. Why would, I mean, it is what it is, man. I'm not going to pretend like, I don't, I'm just not going to do that, man. You know, and, uh, I've done that my whole life in terms of working in corporate America. And uh, I guess got too much, I don't have enough blinders on to do that. Some people are very, very good at hiding their politics. I never understood that, frankly, if you're trying to appeal to a certain audience, a demographic. Don't you want to appeal to like-minded people? I don't want some big greeny freaking crazy, you know, Marxist who's had a silver spoon in his house, in his mouth his whole life as a client. That's no people who can't take a joke. Ah, dude, some guy would stick uh, stick so far up his butt, man, it's coming out of his mouth. I don't want anything to do with those people. So if I can get those people away from me by sharing some political craziness, and hey, more power to me, man. But you could go, you could make more money. I'm not in this for the money. I mean, I'm in it for the money to pay my more. I, I mean, I need money. Don't get me wrong. Hell, I got four kids. But this has never been my, you know. I don't, I don't need to make a billion bucks. I've never had that, ever. I don't even know what you'd do with a billion bucks, dude. I don't want a boat. I guess I could handle, like, if I was Clay Travis, he talks about his three houses. Yeah, so I guess that in some way, that'd be kind of cool. Having a beach house, you know, uh, he's got beach house in Florida someplace. He lives in Franklin, probably next door to Dave Ramsey. I get that. I don't really have that much appeal to that, though, either. I mean, it'd be kind of cool to have a, a second house along the beach or something like that. But to be honest, it sounds more of a hassle than it'd be worth. Yeah, maybe not. I, I can see some, I can see how that can be cool. But if I don't have it, I'm not going to freaking, hey, Mount Airy, going through Mount Airy. Isn't that where, uh, wait, Granny Griffiths, Granny Griffiths show up here, Mount Airy. Um, but I don't need all that stuff. So if I wanted more money, there's easy ways to have more money. It's just, you know, I, well, I don't know the easy ways, but. If I want a bigger YouTube channel with more clients, I could just pretend I don't have a political leanings. That's what people think, and I think they're wrong. I think they're wrong. I think people want to support people who are like-minded with them. Don't you? I mean, don't you say, man, I got a choice between Josh and freaking Schmickle. Well, Schmickle doesn't, I don't know who he is. I don't know his back. He never tells stories about his background. He never tells stories about his growing up or anything. So we don't really know who he is. He seems like a smart guy, but Schmickle, you know, I just, I don't, I don't have a real, relate, a, a personal relationship with him in terms of, I just don't feel like I know the guy. So I don't have a, that connection. Your old buddy Josh, yeah, I'm going to turn some people off like Jesse here. Um, but I'm going to turn other people on. Oh, that, that's why what made Rush Limbaugh so successful. Because he's like, every media is left wing. Everybody knows that. But for some reason, no media wants to appeal to the, the vast masses of people who aren't left-wing. And so Rush Limbaugh says, I'm going to be explicitly right-wing. The media is explicitly left-wing, even though they pretend they're not. But they are. Well, everybody knows this. So Rush said, I'm not even going to hide. I'm going to say I'm a right-wing uh, commentator and take it for what it's worth. And, and so Rush, the reason Rush has become popular is because so many people like me, so, oh, man, finally someone's saying what I think. But also because he had a lot of enemies. A lot of people hated that guy. If you look at any sporting event, you need to have a villain and you need to have a hero. You gotta have those two. I'm telling you, man. You gotta have a team you hate as well as a team you love. 
If it's just two teams like, you know, uh, Connecticut, Purdue, who cares? But if it's freaking, I don't know, Duke versus UNLV, you know what I'm saying? Remember those days? North Carolina versus uh, the Fab Five at Michigan, all right? I mean, that basically was a black versus white thing, at least with Duke versus UNLV, even though Duke had only two white guys, Bobby Hurley and uh, Christian Leitner. I think they had another guy came off the bench, but it wasn't all black versus white. But it's kind of like that, that was the uh, – Miami versus uh, Nebraska, I guess Notre Dame in that regard is uh, I mean that stuff it gets, you know a, a villain and a hero and whatever side you are on the other side is gonna be the villain inherently if if UNLV is your uh, hero then Duke is gonna be the villain if Duke is your hero then UNLV is gonna be the villain it's just that simple man um, high wind advisor yikes could I just pass and win <laughs> But anyway, so Jess emails me. So, but then, you know, lately I've started, last couple of years, though, I, I started to become, I was a hardcore Dem, now I'm a lot more uh, independent because I recognize the red-blue narrative is all fake in terms of uh, programmed. And I completely, I don't think it's fake in terms of, like, I do think there is some momentum that determines how the country is governed, if that makes sense. All right, so if the, if the Republicans take over, even though I do think there's a lot of, you know, and I don't know who the people are. What I don't even know what it is. A download, as Matt McKinley says from Quantum of Conscious YouTube channel. Like you're told, not told by freaking you know George Soros or something like that. It's just like downloaded into your kind of mentality. There's something in the air that can. I, I think that's of interest actually. Um, I don't know if it's a download that you know people say. Okay, now we got to govern a little bit more conservatively because the country's getting pissed off at the libs or vice or I don't I don't know how it works. Or if there is a it won't be George Soros. It'll be some guy like three ranks above him that says, I'm going to, um, we need you guys to do this. I, I don't know how it works. But it is absolutely, A, corrupted and B, programmed in some regard. Now, I, I, at the end of the day, I still think that there is a uh, momentum that says the country's going to be governed like this or governed like that. Um, you can just look at the gun control uh, debate. I mean, that is a huge win for the, Rep not the Republicans. Uh, for the right, for many, you know, he's lived for liberty, win for liberty for many, many years. And if it, this is one of the things that people say, oh man, they want to take away your food, take away this. I'm like, yeah, but we have basically we've had unfiltered access to firearms and ammunition like we've never had in this country ever. It's crazy. Um, I, we just haven't, man, in terms of the ability to afford a firearm, buy ammunition. And uh, you can say, well, he had more, well, he had flint muskets and you know, freaking, uh, um, you know, the black powder, okay, but we, we have more, we have handguns, yeah, I mean, just this, we have more uh, access to, to rifles, firearms, handguns than we've ever had in, in, in America's history for the cost, too, you know, you can afford it more. So it's hard to say at the end of the day that, oh, man, they're all out to get us, uh, they're taking away our rights when the facts are. Um, Abortion has made a lot more restricted in many states in the last 20, 25 years. Uh, obviously, the, the uh, getting rid of Roe v. Wade is perfect makes more states say, yeah, we're going to fundamentally uh, ban abortions. Freaking awesome. Your state, unfortunately, some stupid states say, hey, go ahead and kill the baby in the ninth month. It's all good. Yeah, the uh, pendulum is going to swing against that. When, uh, it's so absurd. It doesn't take much to run a certain campaign and say, hey, this is absurd. We want abortion. You know, you're pro-choicers, but we don't want ab you know, abortion the day before birth. That's insanity. You know what I'm saying? That, that's that's going to be easy to overturn those in many places. Um but will they ever overturn it in California like the way it used to be? I doubt it. But don't forget, I was telling the people on the Locals live stream the other night, and if you don't join me on Locals, man, every Wednesday we go live. I was telling people on the Locals live stream that I was reading John Irving's uh, book, uh, Cider House Rules, and uh, abortion was illegal in Maine in the 1930s and 40s. All right, Maine, that's Maine. Pretty liberal state. Abortion was illegal. So don't forget, things do change, man. So just because it's legal now, um, I don't even think Jan Schill signed the law. I, I don't think they took it up where they said, hey, uh, we're going to sign the law that makes abortion the nine-month legal. I don't even think the Mainers had the guts to do that. I might be. I don't think I am wrong. I think I'm right, though. I think I saw that in the, the, uh, the Maine Policy Institute web, website. I think, uh, I think they did not pursue abortion, unlimited abortion, until the ninth month, which because that's just freaking evil. But, you know, you got a freaking... Uh, you gotta hold the evil accountable, and you know, but it takes time. Anyway, so with Jess here, or Jesse, she says, you know, uh, call her eight six seven five three zero nine. But she also says, yeah, I've lately, you know, lately be the last year or so, 
I've come to realize the red blue divide is just one big old psyop essentially. She didn't say that, but it is, man. It's just a way to have these people at odds, you know. And as I say that, as I'm trying to make people who think like me come more, uh, be more aligned with my YouTube channel. And I don't want to say drive people away who don't think like me, but I, I, my number one priority is to have people who think like me on my channel. My number one priority isn't to be all appealing. I, I don't think that, I think it's a bad move um, fundamentally, absolutely. Business-wise, the whole thing. Obviously, if I'm Charles Schwab or Fidelity, and I'm trying to appeal to everybody, yeah, I get that. But I'm not Charles Schwab or Fidelity. I'm just a freaking crust, crusty old caveman. All right. Got to go. We're going to look over these uh, mountains here in, in Virginia. Awful pretty, my friends. Virginia! There's a band called uh, Whiskey Myers. They have a song called Virginia. Great song. I think they just recently added the third lane up here. Maybe not recently, but the last 20 years. It makes it so much better going up these mountains on 77. Because memory serves, there used to only be two lanes. It's such a pain if you got behind some Pokemon trucker. Like an 81. Oh, 81 is the worst because you got truckers in the left and right lane and sometimes they just go slow and then even worse so you have some freaking Subaru guy going so slow you know some crusty granola person the Subaru going so slow on the on the left hand side you got trucks you know just putting along on the right you're like oh 81's the worst dude really 81 is the worst all right god bless we'll see you